Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at static analysis. So we'll take a look at what it is and then the static analysis flow or how we'll be approaching a sample in uh, when performing static analysis. All right, so let's start off with understanding what static analysis is. As you already know, I covered this during the introduction to malware analysis slides. So static analysis is the process of analyzing malware or a binary without executing it, right? And the objective of static analysis is to extract useful information from the, the malware or the sample. And in turn, this will help us get an idea of the type of malware and what the malware can do. Now, it may not reveal uh, the, the entire functionality of the malware, but it will give us a, a good idea of what this malware can do. Right. So the information is, is going to be useful for future analysis as it allows us to efficiently analyze the sample going forward. So it will allow us to understand, OK, this malware is focused on doing this. Let's uh, when, when analyzing, for example, in dynamic analysis, it will now give us a good idea of what we should be focusing on. All right. Now, talking about the static analysis flow, this is my approach to how uh, to, to, to how you should actually approach a sample and the various uh, th and the various steps you need to take. So, of course, uh, the first one is identifying the file type. So you're trying to identify the target operating system. Is it a PE or portable executable? The architecture, is it 32-bit? Is it 64-bit? Uh, and the format of the file. So is it a DLL? Is it an EXE? Since we're only going to be working with Windows-based malware, this will be very relevant to us. Uh, secondly, is identifying the malware uh, via means of hashing. So uh, essentially generating a hash of the malware and this in turn will give the malware a unique identifier. And you can then use this hash. You can search on the various uh, uh, you can search on the various disclosure sites uh, to actually see if any uh, analysis of this malware has been done. And of course, the second reason for hashing is to uh, because when checking for any potential file changes, you usually perform a hash. So for we'll, be, we'll be creating a hash for the base or the malware before we've actually executed it. And then you can then see whether it, uh, it then changes during the execution process and after the execution process. Uh, uh, thirdly, we have strings. Uh, now strings, uh, of course, we'll be covering quite in depth and strings will give us an idea or a glimpse of what the malware can do. So we'll be able to see things like uh, you know, the, the CNC that it connects to, uh, the various registry entries that it makes, uh, how does it set up persistence, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we'll then take a look at uh, packing and obfuscation and how to unpack or deobfuscate uh, pieces of malware that have, have been packed by uh, packers like UPX. So again, we're just going to, uh, we, we're going to be taking a look at how to, how to unpack and, de and how to deobfuscate uh, pieces of malware to reveal uh, additional information either in the form of strings or any other, uh, or any other way. And lastly, we'll be talking about PE headers and how, to, uh, and uh, essentially taking a look at how the PE header can reveal a lot of information about the malware's functionality. I'll be explaining the PE headers and its structure in depth, so you can also stay tuned for that. Uh, so that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in the introduction. We'll be getting started with identifying the file type and then we'll be carrying on through the entire uh, through the entire flow here. So I'll be seeing you in the next video.